Hi, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to, if I may, present this week's Apprentice Roundup in the style of the most frightening man in Britain, Claude Littner. Take a seat, please. No, I'm not shaking your hand. I'm going to give you an opportunity, OK? To do it the hard way, and I'll rip you to shreds. Or we can have a sensible conversation and a sensible interview, but then you've got to stop the bullshit. Um, I prefer the easy way without the bullshit. I'm going to plant a seed of worthlessness inside you that will ravage you and leave you broken and weeping within a fortnight, all right? If you have any doubt about that, listen to how unnervingly soft my voice is, how barely concealed the apoplexy is within it, and most importantly, look into my eyes, my lidless shark's eyes, which haven't blinked since I was 12. I've caught you out already. I was never 12. Do I look like the sort of person who was ever 12? Is that what you're doing? Imagining me in shorts, playing conkers? Is that how you've tried to get through this interview? By imagining me on the toilet or something? Because let me tell you, Sunshine, you have no idea what you're dealing with. I don't go to the toilet. I'm too efficient for that. You'll beg me for death before today's out. And in my mercy, I will give it to you. Stella, this morning, what did you say to Stuart? You said, I think we're going to Vigilan. Don't you think you should know by now it's pronounced Viglan? Jamie. You said of my colleague, he asked a business question, I gave him a business answer. But your business is nothing but dog business. The truth is, you're just playing. I saw you this morning, dressing up and pretending to be an executive. That's John Major. Mm, this is new, new Labour. And what are you both? Stupid. Talking about third nipples on your CV. In your next CV, you'll be able to talk about the second arsehole I'm going to make for you. Joanna, you talk about working in Vigilant in Viglan, but you can't pronounce it properly. And even though at the end of the show, Lord Sugar will tell you you leave with your head high, it should really be bowed in eternal shame. Chris, can I first of all just bring up a point Margaret jotted down in her interview with you? The thing is, I think she got it wrong about you. She should have gone further. You're a boring, drawling, arrogant, oafish, preening, feckless, strutting, non-starter of a jumped up public school tosser. Would you agree? I believe I am, yes. Stuart. Nice to meet you. Sit down, please. Psych! Don't tell me what a brand means, okay? You are not a brand. You're not a brand. I think I might be. Fine. Let's explore this a bit further, then. Stuart, you addressed my colleague as Margaret when it was abundantly clear that it would get used as a clip on all the promos. You're not a big fish. You're not a big fish. You're not even a fish. Do you know what you are? You're full of shit, basically. So let me tell you how it's going to shake down tomorrow. Stuart! You are fired. Yeah, that's right, big man. Jamie, wipe that smirk off your face. You're fired. Stella, you're the most qualified person and you're through to the final, quite rightly. And Chris, you're going to wear Lord Sugar down like a tooth in Coca-Cola. But you'll probably get the job because you're one of the boys. And Lord Sugar likes the boys. I don't mean it like that. Stop looking so worried. Jake Yap's doing a musical for the final with Harry the Piano. And you better watch it, because if not, I'm going to find your CV online and I'm going to hunt you down and I'll give you the chance to see something very few people ever get to see. Your own heart beating in my hand as I remove it from your ribcage and slowly crash it into a slippery wet pulp. Sleep tight.